G'day guys, number 33, framing exercise two. Um, we'll get straight into this, we'll talk about it as we go. Um, again, same as last one, two pieces of 90 by 45 on the uprights, and I think these dark ones are 90 millimeters by 15, 15, 15. Yep, looks like 45 as well. So we're only using 90 by 45s. So let's put in that first piece, we'll type in 45 comma 90 here, and we'll push it up by 400, so 400. Zero, zero. Okay, uh, now I, um, because we may need to reference the top tops of these to lay out our, um, to lay out the pieces and stuff, we might save these little chamfers for last. Um, we can mark them out now though, that shouldn't be too hard. Um, if we go, um, what does it say about the chamfers? Because we've got four chamfers, one, two, three, four, and they're 20 by 20. So we've got to go down 20 and across 20, and we'll have a line in there, easy. And same on the other side. Um, another way you can do it, I don't usually like to do it this way, you can put in a rectangle, 20 comma 20, and then draw a line from point to point. Just another way to do it, but then you've got to rub out two lines. So whichever way you want to do it. Uh, okay, so let's, for starters here, it looks like we've got a mortise and tenon joint, a through mortise and tenon. So um, that one is centered in the material. It's 90 millimeters wide and 15 millimeters, or the tenon is 15 millimeters thick. So the information we have about that is um, from the bottom of that um, chamfer, it's 30 millimeters to the top of that piece of timber. So from here, it's 30 millimeters down. There's the top of that piece of timber. So let's draw that across to 45. Okay, now um, it looks like, yeah, we've got a separation of 15, 15, and 15. So we'll put those marks in, 15, and the tenon is 15, okay. Then, um, <clears throat> so in, in this upright piece, we're going to have the mortise. So we just have, we're just going to basically put in a hole for the tenon to go through. <coughs> so from here, we just got to draw in a rectangle that is 90 by 15. Okay, and if we push this right the way through, so I'll just go to that point there, right? See how that side there is now looking like that? Okay, so that is the mortise piece done. So let's go to the bottom, and it looks like we've got a, a bridle joint. So the bridle joint is 50 millimeters from the bottom. So we'll go from the bottom 50 millimeters up. Then we can probably just transfer these lines straight down um, because we've already measured those. Now remember, when, when you go in here, go on the blue axis, hold down shift, and then you can line it up with that guide point. So um, we need to now put in a couple of rectangles here that again will be 90 by 15. One there and one here, 90 by 15. And we're gonna push those all the way through. Okay, so that's that piece done besides the chamfers. Again, we'll save those till the end. Now, um, we need to put another piece in. We'll do the second upright and we can see the distance between, oh, we don't get a distance between them, but from this end to that end, 390 millimeters so from here 390 across and then we've got to start drawing back towards the other piece and we're going to put in a 45 by a 90 okay so we put this one in push it up by 400 there we go and i think i've just realized that i haven't made this a component which is fine we just got to triple click right click make component create triple click make component create okay so in this one let's put those chamfers on like we spoke about um 20 and 20 out this way over here 20 millimeters down 20 millimeters across and then we just got to go dot to dot with the pencil tool easy as that okay now let's see we've got a half lap joint here and we've got a half lap dovetail down the bottom. Let's start with the half lap first. Um, again, this piece will be going straight across, so that's 30 millimeters down. We can probably reference straight off that and go straight across to here, 210. We've got that point now. And we're gonna go in until 20 millimeters from the back. See, there's a 20 millimeter gap. I'll zoom in in case you can't see. Oops. 20 millimeter gap there. So. We'll go all the way across, which is 90. So let's type in 70. 
that work? No, hang on. 70, enter. There we go. Um, so that's a 20 millimeter gap there. 90 take away 20 is 70. Then we can put in a rectangle and that rectangle has to be, I think it'll be 90 by 70. 90 comma 70. Yep, looks right. So here all we have to do is push in half half the way through the material, right? It's a half lap, so we're gonna go halfway through. So half of 45 is 22.5, right? Yeah, I think that's right. Let me just measure in case I'm not very good at math. 22.5, bang on Mr. Madrich, well done. Okay, uh, now down the bottom, we need to put in a half lap dovetail. Okay, so we'll measure across from here again, straight across to 10. Oh, then the information we have is a, um, we've got 22 millimeters is um, that dimension there, which will be the same there. So we go 22 millimeters in, that's gonna be the base of the, um, or like where that slope ends, I guess you could say. And then we need to put the other side in. So I guess we could go from this bottom point here, all the way up to 90, oopsies, wrong way, on the blue axis, 90. There we go. And then from that point, come back 22. There we go. So that and that are the bottoms. Now, you remember in the last video to put in that one to six slope, we had to put in an angled line that was 9.5 degrees. So we click once, click out along the direction we want to go, and then move it out. And we go 9.5, enter. Same here. Click, click, and then 9.5, enter. Okay. And here we have a 20 millimeter gap. Um, that might be tricky because we can't measure along this line because that's going at an angle and it won't give us an accurate measurement. What we might have to do is um, measure 20 millimeters in on the bottom and then draw a line straight up like that. And you can see that's the shape we want to remove here. So let's see if the pencil tool will allow us to lock onto those points. Uh, no, see, it doesn't want to let us lock on. Okay. Solution to that, that's easy. All we've got to do is go from the bottom here, draw a pencil line straight up, and we should be able to snap onto that now. There and there. And we'll just use the eraser to get rid of the lines we don't want. Okay, perfect. So we're going to push this part in, 22.5, enter, halfway in. Okay, so there's that piece removed for the half lap dovetail. And I think that's everything done. Yeah, pretty well. So we can get rid of these chamfers now. Cool. Go into this one. Get rid of those chamfers with the push-pull tool. And that's those bits done. We can probably get rid of the guides so they don't confuse us when we're doing the next two pieces. Delete guides. And yeah, let's start getting those next pieces in. Okay, we'll start off with the top one. Why not? Um, so from here, we'll grab the rectangle tool and we'll draw straight along here. And... I think I'm bang on it now, 370 by 90. Yep, click, and we'll push this one in. We're gonna push it, we're gonna have to, we can't just push it to the half lap, we're gonna have to push it all the way through and then remove the um, other parts later. So we'll push it in 45, we'll triple click on it to make it a component, component three, then double click. Now we've got to remove the parts we don't want. So, um, for this side where the mortise and tenon is, we need to remove the two sides. So we use the rectangle tool from there to there, there to there, and we'll push pull those back to the start here or in line with this edge. Yep, on the edge. And then same there, or I can probably just double click that. Nope, won't let me do it. Um, there we go. So that's that bit fits in perfectly. Then on the back side here, we need to get rid of this face. Um, so we can just draw a straight line along that edge and push this part in to, um, we don't want to go to 45, we want to go to 22.5. Okay, so that's that piece in. That should be right. Um, let's put the bottom one in. We'll check it when we paint it later. I don't think there'll be any mistakes there. We're going to go from here. Uh, will that work? Uh, maybe not. Maybe we'll go from here to here first. Um, so we go 300 comma 90 and then it might be best to trace this like that. The only reason I didn't want to measure from there is because see how this 
doesn't actually line up. There's a little bit of a gap there, right? That's why I don't want to measure from there. So um, let's see, easiest way to do this, we can push this shape all the way across to the edge like that. And then, oh, sorry, phone's ringing. Uh, and then this one, we're going to push in 22.5, enter. And that's that half lap part done. We can erase this line. And then all we're going to need to do is, oh, sorry, we haven't made a component yet. Triple click. Um, sorry, one second, guys. Um, triple click, make component, component four, um, create, and then double click on it. We're going to go down here and we're going to remove the opposite part. We're going to remove the center of it. So we can use the pencil tool. We're going to click straight down from here to here, here to here, and then push this part in 90 millimeters. Enter. And I reckon that's everything done. Let's paint it and see, um, see how we did. So get the paint bucket. We're going to go paint that, that, and then these two, and that looks perfect, right? Um, we can see that we haven't got any um, color overlap or anything like that, or everything's exactly the right colors it is in the drawing. So that is that drawing done. That's good stuff. All right, well done. Um, so let's save it. Oh, we'll delete the guides first and save as number 33 framing exercise two. And is it number, th yeah, number 33? Save it, file new. And now up to the, oh, so our first carcass joints. We're going to learn about carcass joints now. Okay, see you in the next video.